Tonight we have Mr. Mr. Bob Heilig, who I got to know a couple years ago when he joined our business, and he's done just an absolute, absolutely phenomenal job out there. Uh, has gotten to the point, and some of you have heard this story already, where last week he was able to fire his boss, and that is just that is the goal of so many people that I talk to uh, on a daily basis, and, and it is great, you know, as and one by one. Everybody gets to do it. it it's just a, an absolutely phenomenal feeling to see people be able to reach that uh, that plateau. So, without further ado, we want to get right into it. Mr. Bob Hiley, come on up, Bob. Thank you. Thank I, uh, I want to give it back to Kevin for uh, for that introduction. And, um, you know, one of the one of the biggest reasons why I was able to have the success that I did have was because um, really early on uh, I had a chance to meet uh, you know Mr. Marino and, and his partner, Mr. Bob Doran, and uh, you know really I think one of the things that I realized right away, and and uh, you know Andre made mention of this, is that if somebody's done it before you, that means that you can do it. And that was the one thing that I saw, is I saw two gentlemen that, you know, had had a tremendous amount of success, and I said, who am I to, to really reinvent the wheel here? I'm just going to do exactly what they said. And, and that's what I did. You know, I was coachable, I was teachable. And I think the importance of this training that we're going to go through here tonight is to really kind of give you that blueprint, give you the roadmap that you're going to need to really be able to have success. And I think it's so important to understand that there is very much a right and a wrong way to do this business. And I think the benefit of all of you being new or, or those of you that are watching this video for the first time is that we've spent literally the last two and a half years figuring out everything that doesn't work. We've already made every single mistake. I can promise you Whatever you don't see in this video here tonight, we've tried, and it doesn't work. <laughs> so anytime I hear somebody say, I've got an idea, I just say, stop. <laughs> Ideas do not pay you money in this, in this opportunity. We've literally drilled down, and we've, we're, we're teaching you exactly what's going to help you make money. So all that you have to do is you have to understand that you've got to realize we're not going to teach you anything that's not going to help you be successful, because that's how we make money if you do. So if you just follow this step by step, but it's really important to understand some general concepts before we get into the specifics of uh, what you, you're supposed to do and what you're supposed to say, we just want to take some time to go through some general concepts. And it's important for you to understand that, you know, so you've seen the four steps to getting started, you've made your list. You know, you've, uh, you're, you're willing to go and start to approach people. You're not going to prejudge them, but you have to understand it's that initial conversation that you have with people that will determine your success or failure. And we're going to elaborate on that a little bit. You know, if you don't learn how to properly approach somebody, nothing else matters. You know, it's funny, you know, I'll, I'll have new people sometimes and you know, and they, and they want to get caught up in the, in the compensation plan and understanding all this different stuff. And, and I always tell them, I say, stop. I say, unless you learn how to talk to somebody the right way, the compensation plan will not matter to you because you're not going to make any money. So it's mastering. If you want to master anything, master, that, master the approach. And, uh, and like we said, just be willing to approach everybody. Before you do... Before you begin in your business, you've got to make a decision, okay? You've really got to ask yourself a question. Is your goal to become an energy salesperson, go out and sell gas and electricity to your friends and family, or is the goal of you getting involved with North American Power giving yourself the ability to build and own your own energy company? Put yourself in a position where you can literally get paid on thousands of gas and electric customers, and all you have to do is go out and get a handful. Okay? So I'm going to guess that the answer for virtually everybody is to own your own energy company. And if that's the case, you have to realize one thing. What we're going to teach you on this video 
is the only way that you will be able to accomplish that. We'll talk about why that is. Here's the formula for success in our business. Okay, now this is something that um, it took me a while to understand. And it's such an important thing for you, to, for you to realize, okay? If you understand this one statement, you'll get the whole entire reason why we have a system, okay? So here's the formula for success in our business. Your ability to get a large group of people to do a few simple things over a consistent period of time. Now, what, what does that mean? It means that unless you have a system, an approach, a way to talk to people, a way to expose people that is so simple that literally anybody can do, you will never create exponential growth. You'll never create that massive organization that you want because it's going to be left to the handful of superstar sales types, right? That'll be the only ones that can do what it is you're asking them to do. So the power of our business is it doesn't matter if you're a, 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 literally a high school graduate or you're an 85 year old retiree, you can follow this system and you can go out and you can do these simple things and you can start to grow a business. So this is really important to understand. Here's the two biggest mistakes. Now I speak very much from experience here because I made both of these mistakes over and over and over again. Okay. The first mistake is people get involved with the mindset of, I'm going to go save everybody I know money on their gas and electric bill. See, I remember when I saw this business the first time, I remember thinking, like, this is ridiculous. This is a no-brainer. Like, who in their right mind would not want to save money on their electric bill? And I went out, and I just started bulldozing my friends over, literally like, give me your bill. How much do you pay for your electric? I'm going to save you money. And the interesting thing was I failed miserably. And I'm going to talk to you in a minute about why that won't work. If you go you know, into a conversation talking about savings. Now, I'm not saying that savings aren't important. And I'm also not saying that many of the people that you approach are not going to enroll. But they'll enroll just because of the savings. But I'm telling you if, you, if that's part of your initial conversation, you're not going to succeed in your goal of building an energy company. <coughs> Here's the second biggest mistake, is people try, I try to explain the opportunity. I was trying to recruit people. I was telling my friends and family everything about the company, right? I was presenting the business to them. That's not going to work either, okay? Now, Here's the reason why both of these things don't work. They are perceived as selling conversations by the person that you're talking to. Does that make sense? Sure. See, haven't we all been on the other end of one of these conversations? Somebody was pitching us on some sort of an opportunity or a product or a home-based business. Think about it. How did you feel when that was happening? I mean, aren't these the kind of conversations we want to run away from, right? You know, it's like uh, we act like our phone rang, right? Oh, who's that? No, I didn't hear it. It's vibrating. It's on vibrating, right? These, this is what we do. We're, we, when we feel like we're being sold, we have a tendency to just shut down. And whether you're talking about savings or whether you're talking about the opportunity, people feel like you're selling them. And people are very averse to sales. And people certainly don't want to go out and do something like that. So just understand so that these are now here's what some of you may be thinking. Okay, well I can't talk about the service. I can't talk about the opportunity. What the heck am I supposed to say? Like what am I when I what would I say? Well that's the whole purpose is we're gonna go over exactly what it is that you do. Most people are not sales types and they either don't want to do what you just did or they don't have the ability to do that. So, important to understand that. Here's what you need to ask yourself. Can my brand new person that I just <coughs> enrolled, can they do what I just did? Now, what do I mean when I just did? Can they do what I just did to approach them about my business? to lead them to a presentation. Everything I did from, from the second I opened my mouth, 
can you then turn around and do that tomorrow when I'm not there to help you? And, and you need to think about, even as a leader in what we do every day, are we straying away from the correct way to do things? Because if the answer is no, then you need to reevaluate what you do. Because the whole purpose of this is that you want to become a responsible sponsor. You want to understand that from the second you open your mouth to somebody, you're teaching them how to do the business. Here's something that I learned the hard way. Most people never even understand. It's why the reason, it's, it's quite frankly, it's the reason why most new people fail. 75% of your new person's training is done when you enroll them as a customer. Now this, that goes completely against what we think. Right? We think, okay, I got them signed up, now let me teach them what they're supposed to do. Wrong. You've been teaching them what to do since the second you open your mouth to them. See, people will not do what you say, they do what you do. So you have to be conscious of that. See, here's the thing that, I, that, that, you know, that my mentors taught me. It doesn't matter if what you do works. It only matters if it duplicates. Now, what does that mean? It means if you go out and you talk about savings and you try to save people money, you might be a good salesperson and you might be able to sign up a whole bunch of your family and friends. Or people just might like you, they might respect you, and they might do it just because you said to do it. And you might think you're having success because you get a fast start bonus in your first month, you're jacked out of your mind. And then here's what happens. The next month, not one of those people does anything. And what you realized is that you did fail because you set those people up for failure. Because remember, they either didn't want to do or they couldn't do what you did. Same thing with introducing people. If you personally try to present the business, you're trying to recruit people, you might sign a bunch of people up. You know, we've got people in our business, very, very successful entrepreneurs, you know, very, very uh, influential people in their community that they could literally just tell somebody to do something and they're going to do it. They won't even ask. But the problem is, if that's how you introduce me to the business, that's what I'm going to go do for my people. And if I don't have that same personal power, if people don't respect me the same way, your business dies and it dies because you taught me the wrong way to do it. So it's really important that you realize that. <coughs> we talked about that from the moment you open your mouth. You're teaching them what to do. People do what you do. They don't do what you say. You will lead by example in this business. So let's talk about the approach. So we've already we've explained to you, you know, some of the basic philosophies of doing things the right way. We told you what not to do. So let's talk a little bit about what you should do. So you've got your list and you now have to approach somebody. There's two parts to this approach. The first part is what we call the invitation. That is your role. The second part is the presentation. That is never, see we have it in capitals and bold. <laughs> Anytime you see something in capitals and bold, it means it's very important. Please take note of that. That is never your role. You invite somebody or somebody else present. Okay? So this is the mental imagery. When you're talking to somebody, I want you to think about me standing up here with a purple shirt and holding my two hands in the air like this, separate. Here's what most new people do. They mash them together. They invite into a presentation and they wind up chasing people away. These two things must always be done by different people. Even today, myself, I give presentations, right? You know, I am able to do it, but if I talk to some, if I know you and I approach you, I am not going to present. I am gonna to defer to somebody or something else because I know I always must honor this right here. Most new people combine them both, they push people away. Okay, so let's, let's talk about um, how this is supposed to go, okay? So I want to make a distinction for you. I want, I want to get you to visualize something. When you are personally presenting the information, when you're combining that invite and that presentation, 
What that is referred to is first party. You are giving the information first party. It's you delivering it to somebody. So if I could use, if I could, uh, you know, use an analogy here, let's say that this TV screen or, or this sign here is, my, is North American Power. It's the opportunity. And if I approach you and I'm offering you my opportunity, but I am delivering the information first person, can you see my opportunity? What do you see? Yeah. You see me. You're hearing me. You're, everything, all the information I'm giving, I'm just reading this sign, but it's coming through the filter of who I am. Does that make sense? Yes. You're going to judge the message by the messenger, right? Married people in the room? Does this not relate to the husband and wife dynamic? You hear something from them, and then you hear it from somebody else, and you hear it different, right? This is what happens. Parents with children. It's, it's the exact same thing. So first party, delivering information like that is deadly to your business. So what should you do? You should utilize what we call third party. And third party very simply would be this. Would be me just inviting you to the information. Notice in this scenario, what do you see? See, I'm not making it about me. It has nothing to do with me. It's this. See, here's the problem. If you've ever had somebody ask you, well, how much money are you making? It's because of this. You're making it about you. So get yourself out of the way and start talking about somebody or something else, and it will make your job so much simpler, and you'll be so much more effective. Let me give you a couple examples um, of third party. There's only really two different types of third party uh, examples. Number one is an event. So an event could be, you know, we have a number of people that do live webinar presentations. You know, we're recording this via a live webcast. That, that, this is an event. It could be, a, a, you know, a meeting where you have your new prospect and you get somebody in your support team. They got, you have lunch or you get a cup of coffee and they present the business. You know, that could be a live event. Uh, it could be a weekly meeting. You know, in many of the areas, you know, we're here at the training center in Connecticut. They do meetings here every day. There's opportunities to do that. Um, it could be, you know, in some of the other areas, the hotel meetings or the Saturday or the regional trainings. The last thing there, a home meeting, is by far the most effective of the live events. And it's what we encourage any serious person in this business. We strongly encourage you to pick a day and a time, to start to contact the people that you know and go through this process, and have a, uh, have a day and a time where you can simply, at the end of this, say, hey, come to my house on this day and learn more about the business. Because this is what we found. If you try to build your business through weekly meetings or dragging people to events, it, you, you'll, you will be so frustrated. It's so hard to get, if you invite 20 people, to a live weekly meeting, you'll be lucky if two or three show up. But that same, those same 20 people, if you invite them to your home, you could get 15 of them to show up there. And the whole key is just getting people in front of it, okay? So events are one, and the second type of a third party is a tool. So a tool could be a recorded version of the webinar. You know, there are a number of them out there that you can use. A tool could be your website. It could be a DVD. The company has a DVD with presentation on it. It could be any of the videos that, are, uh, that the company has just recently put out. We've got underline, once again, bold and underline that it's important. The company overview call, some people call it the sizzle call. This is, in our opinion, by far the most effective tool. We're going to talk a little bit more about the usage of that but in our experience, we have overwhelming, overwhelmingly gotten positive responses from this, and people are having tremendous amounts of success utilizing this. So let me ask you a question. Which one of these two do you think is more effective? Whatever works. Whatever works. <laughs> Listen, events are way more effective. Getting people in, you know, with other people, you get somebody in an environment like this, it's way more effective than me sitting 
in, in, in my computer, you know, in front of my computer screen in my bedroom watching a webinar. This is way more effective. But the problem is this. The average person does not have the skill set or the ability to get people to one of these. They can't create enough value on their own. They don't have enough personal power. So tools are way more effective. Tools will become the crutch for the new person that's nervous, that doesn't have the language, that might not have the respect that a lot of people do in this business, right? So they can use a tool first to create the value to then get somebody to an event. So it's the tool that we really think is the most effective way to go with third party. So, okay, so you've learned everything up to this point. You've learned the concepts of why you don't want to present, the importance of following this system. So let's get into just that. Let's talk about what are you supposed to do and what are you supposed to say. Now, there's two parts really here to this process. There's the invite, right, which is what we showed you in the beginning. You know, you remember the invite in the presentation. So you're inviting to the, the third party presentation, which we recommend initially is a tool, which we recommend is the five minute or the sizzle call, the company overview call. Look, we're reaching a point now where, you know, there are, there are calls done by females. There are, you know, uh, Spanish speaking calls. There's, there's a number of calls. Look, there's no right or wrong one. They're all done by some of the top earners in the company. They're all done very well. It's just whatever, whichever one you relate to. Whichever one you think your new person is going to relate to the most, okay? But the, the call is what separates the two parts. There's the invite, and then there's the follow-up. And if you're following along with the getting started packet, we're taking you right through this process. So what we're on right now is we are on the invite sheet. So there's three parts here to the invitation. Number one is share your why. Now, in the four steps to getting started, you learned about the importance of determining what your why is. Well, now is when you start to tell it to people. And sharing your why is critical because it sets the tone for the conversation that at the very least, after I have you listen to the five-minute overview call, at the very least, you are signing up as a customer and you're supporting my business. And the, re and the reason why you're doing that is because I just shared with you the reason why, and I'm going to ask you to help me. See, if I try to save you money, if I try to get you into a business, it's very easy for you to say thanks, but no thanks. But if I share my why, if I say I started this business because I'm, you know, because I'm unsure of my job, and I'm looking for some financial security, I need financial relief, I'm trying to pay off my debt, I want to spend more time with my kids, and then I ask you to help me and try the service, it is very hard for you at that point to tell me no. So you're sharing your why, it's setting the tone, and it goes like this. I recently decided to start my own business. Tell them you started a business. It's your business. Here's the reason why. Step one, it answers the first question they have. What are you doing? You just told them, started my own business. Step number two, compliment the person this answers the second question that everybody will have, which is, why are you calling me? Tell them why. I'm calling you because we're good friends. You know, we've been friends for a while. You've always been there when I could count on you. I could use your help. Or maybe it's somebody that you respect and that you look up to. Tell them that. I really respect you. What you've done in business, what you've done in your job, who you are as a person in the community, right? And I could really use your opinion on something. Now, I want you to notice one thing. We're not, in this compliment, trying to recruit people. You know, sometimes, I remember one time I was trying to coach a new rep, and I said, and they, you know, I said, compliment me. And they said, well, I know you're the kind of person that always wants to make extra money. That's not a compliment. A compliment <laughs> is said the same way. You're one of the most ambitious people that I know. It is so important. Eat, look as hard as it's going to be for you to compliment some of the people you're going to approach. Like, you, you might literally need to sit up for a half an hour just thinking of one thing you can say to this person. <laughs> Look, you can have fun with it. I can call the most skeptical person I know in the world, and I can say, you know what, John? Here's why I'm calling you. 
you're the most realistic person I know. Nobody can get anything by you, and I need that right now. It's disarming. And I'm telling you, if you share your why and you compliment that person, and then all you ask them to do is listen to a five-minute call and have them give you their honest opinion, there's not anybody that won't do that for you. So step three is listen to the call. Now we recommend that you use conference or three-way calling. Three-way them right into the call, right then and there. See, you might run into somebody that just literally doesn't have five minutes at that point, and if that's the case, find out when you can call them. I'll be free around four, great, I'll call you then. Because here's what I know. If I three-way them into the call, I know they're gonna listen to it. See, why create an extra step? Why now have to say, well, let me give you the call, and then you gotta listen to it, and now I gotta follow up with you, and then you don't listen to the call, and then I'm calling you tomorrow, right? You know what I'm saying? You're, you're creating an extra step. Say, do you have five minutes right now, and put them on the phone right then and there, okay? There's the number, that's one of the numbers, okay? Check with your support team. They'll give you the entire uh, you know, array of calls that we have. And you can choose and listen to, choose which one you want. Doesn't matter. Ask them, five minutes right now. Now, it's important for me to say one thing. Don't just put them on the call. Don't just say, I want you to listen to a call. What, what, you know, I want you to listen to a, 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 an overview of the, what I'm involved with done by one of the top executives in the company. Just create a little bit of value, right? So if you put them on my call, when this lunatic gets on and starts yelling at them, they're like, all right, this is a successful lunatic, at least. There's at least a little bit of value. Don't, you know, you've got to at least preface it a little bit, okay? And you're just looking for their opinion. See, if I think I'm listening to the call to see if I want to do it, I don't want to do it. While I'm listening to the call, this is what I'm going to be thinking. I'm already busy. I'm not interested in anything else. I'm not even going to listen. I'm not going to hear it the way I need to hear it. But if you've gone through this process and you said, give me your opinion, look, do people like giving their opinions? Yeah. They're going to give you their opinion whether they listen to this call or not. It might as well be an educated opinion. So they're going to hear it differently if they think it's just to give you their opinion. And that's it. Look. You can, here's the beauty of the five minute call. You can stumble, bumble, and fumble your way through that. As long as they get on the call, they're at least going to understand what it is. It's designed to give them enough information without going overboard so that they right then and there can tell if this is something they want to do or not. And then at the end of this process, when my friend says, well, you know, I don't know if I can do that. I'm not really a salesperson, blah, 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 right? This stuff that people say, what I can say to them is I say, what about what I did can't you do? So you're telling me you can't have somebody listen to a five-minute phone call? Well, yeah, I can do that. Okay, great, then you can do it. But I can only say that unless I follow the approach. So that's the invite. Listen, that's not the hard part. This is the part that we, I struggle with that most people struggle with. It's what do you do after the call to then get them as a customer and then eventually get them to do something, refer people, right? Is this not where we struggle? Yep. So let me tell you what our experience has shown us. It is important for you to understand that people will sign up as your customer for two reasons. Number one is they want to make money. This is an easy one. They're on the call. Great, I, I want to be in the business, I want to do this, I'm signing my bill up. You don't really need much training for that, okay? The second reason, and I want you to notice first what it isn't, it's not to save money on their bill. It's to help and support you in your business. Very important that you realize that. See, our primary goal here is we want to get that customer signed up right then and there. And if you three-way them into the call, right, you can then go through this follow-up process and get them as a customer. When do you want to get paid? Yes, now, right? 
When do you want your new people to get paid? Now. They need those 10 now. We need them to get that check. Now, I'm going to talk a second about the savings aspect of it here, you know, where that comes into play. But the key that you want to do is you want to leverage your relationship. You need to realize that it is the relationship you have with that person that is going to get them over that, that little bit of skepticism that most people have about this, right? They've never been able to do this before, right? Most people would rather just not even deal with it. They get, they're getting all these mailers and they just throw them out. They're like, you know what, I, I don't want to deal with it. It's easier to do that. And if you're, if you're not leveraging the relationship, you're giving them an easy out. It's the relationship that's going to get them over that little bit of hesitation, that little bit of skepticism. And here's why we push the relationship so hard. It has become very obvious to us that the first step in somebody actually doing the business is they have to become a customer first. Now that's obvious, but there's other nuances to that. If I can get you as a customer right then and there on the spot, and it's a comfortable, easy conversation, you listen to a call, I ask you to do me a favor, I sign you up, and then I turn around and give you a website, and say, can you send people to that website? You make money. That's the business. That's how simple you've got to be shown. Some of us are making this so much harder than it needs to be. We're going into these elaborate presentations and answering questions, and we want to, you know, we want to break down the compensation. Don't do that. Have them listen to a five-minute call. Here's your website. Can you send people to this and make money? That's our business. But that doesn't happen unless they've experienced it and become a customer. So after the call, you've had them on the call, you ask them a question. Now, this is an example. Look, we're not sticklers on language, like, well, you didn't say that, you know? Like, we're not trying to make you robots. But we want you to understand the concept here. Do you see yourself as a customer supporting my business, or are you interested in partnering up with me so we can go out and get paid? That's it. Customer or business. Now that's what? That's an assumptive close. That's sales, a sales term. You're assuming that they're going to do this because they're your mother. And it's your brother and it's your best friend. Right? Your first 10, if these people, if you were in a traditional business and they were not your customers, and they were patronizing a competitor of yours and paying more, you would be clubbing them over the head and bringing them into your establishment. You would never accept that your close friends and family would not do business with you. If I owned a pizza shop, I use this all the time, and there was a pizza shop down the street, and my brother walked by the front door of my pizza shop and bought pizza from the guy down the street and paid more money, do you think the next time I saw him that that would be a pleasant conversation? <laughs> Now, when I saw him, did you, do you think this is what I would say to him? Well, John, I mean, you really should buy your pizza from me. You know, my dough's made fresh every day. <laughs> and I get the highest quality cheese. My sauce is delicious. No. I would say, dude, you're my brother. I'm never talking to you again unless you buy pizza from me. So why is this any different? This is your business. You've got a strong reason why to do this. If your close family and friends don't help your business, that could mean failure for you. So you have to let them know that it's important to you. But you're assuming that they're going to be your customer. Regardless of their answer. Customer, rep, and anything in between. You're going to say this. Can you do me a huge favor? I'm working hard to get a bonus. If you're in your first 30 days, are you working hard to get a bonus? Sure. Now, if you're not in your first 30 days, aren't we always trying to get a promotion? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Director, area director, look, I'm working hard to get a promotion. You're always in one of those two scenarios. It's important that you say that because it creates a sense of urgency. I'm going to ask you to help me today. I need it today. I'm trying to get a bonus today. I'm trying to get a promotion today create a sense of urgency, and I need your help. Would you be willing to give the service a try? There's no, look, here's where I'm going to go, see, 
I started with the relationship, now I'm going to go into explaining it. No cost or commitment, right? Nothing changes. And if you sign up today, my company is going to pay you $50 just to help me. Did I, did I start with this? No. See, this to me shouldn't even matter. It's just like an added benefit. Oh, by the way, this is what you get. You'll save a couple of dollars, okay? But it's the relationship. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, I had a really hard, I had a problem with this right here. Because I'm the type of person, I will do anything for anybody. But I hate asking people for a favor. I still don't like doing it. I only do it because I know it works. And I know that that's how I'm going to get them to do the business, right? So I tried to sell. I tried to do it my own way. I failed miserably. And I remember, I was like, you know what? Let me, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm going to do it the way they teach. Because I, I, I'm just so fed up. I said, let me try it. And I wrote out my little script, and I remember it like this was yesterday. I called my friend up, and, I, and my friend Rip, and I said, Rip, I need a huge favor. And I started to go into my little spiel, and he literally stopped me. I didn't even make it through the next sentence. He said, dude, stop. He goes, whatever you need, just tell me. And I can remember, I lit I, it felt like 10 minutes. It was probably 10 seconds. I didn't say anything, because I was like, I, they didn't teach me this in training. I don't know what to do. Like, I, don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I was like, I, you got to let me get through this. I was like practicing, right? But here's what it did. It was a paradigm shift for me. I got it. I said, now I understand. It, it totally made sense to me. So was I uncomfortable? Yeah. But I was excited because it worked. And what happened was I got less, I got more and more comfortable with it because I started to see results in my business, okay? But you'll learn this, by the way, the easy way or the hard way. That's your choice. So somebody says, yes, I'll help you, I'll be your customer. Have them get their bill, okay? If you're on the phone with them, do you have a copy of your bill? If you're with them, you know, do you have a copy of the bill? Um, now, if they don't have a copy of the bill, if you're with them and they don't, we have what's called an email reminder form that you can fill out right then and there when you're with them. You can have them subconsciously or consciously commit to you. Yeah, I'll do it. Let me fill my information out, right? So they've done it in their mind. And then when they get home, you have them, you call them and you get their account number. But you fill out the form and you submit it on your website. Do not put your check in somebody else's hands. If you just give your website out, it's like a it, it, it's 50-50 if you're lucky that they're going to go do it because something happens. So you put the information in and then all they have to do is make the confirmation call, okay? Yeah, they have to do that confirmation call. And look, after you enroll them, give them their website like we talked about and then say this, can you have somebody listen to a five minute call and then just send somebody to this website? Look, it's so funny what people their perception of doing the business is versus what we actually want them to do, which is just refer. And look, the beautiful part about this opportunity is that yes, we do have serious people that are building through home meetings, that are building through weekly meetings and all this stuff, and that will always happen, but you can build a business without doing any of that. You can make $250 without even leaving your home. And that could turn into a business for some people. But you need to be keeping it simple in their mind or else they won't do it. Look, somebody that's interested in the business, same scenario. Have them get their bill, sign them up right on the spot, okay? But have them sign themselves up because this is going to be their first training opportunity. They're now going to learn how to sign up a customer, which is themselves. It'll give them an understanding of the process, how simple it is. And um, you know, here's the other thing, guys, is that some people that are interested in the business, they say they're interested. If you don't get them as a customer right then and there, and they don't ever follow through, they don't ever come to your home meeting, you know, they don't ever watch the recorded presentation you give them, now you have to chase them, which happens a lot and it's frustrating. But if I get you as a customer first, because the most important thing I can do is get myself paid, get my 10 customers, then I don't really care if you flake out right now. But here's the other thing you need to think about, is that getting them as a customer 
will be the first step in getting to do the business. Look, I'll become much more interested, I promise you, if I can see how simple this is. If I can have a website of my own to do research. You show me how to get into my own back office, I have access to all these things. So guys, just understand, whether they're interested in customer, rep, you're, you want to get them signed up right then and there, right on the spot, okay? And then listen, after you've enrolled that person, invite them to your home meeting. Invite them to view one of the recorded webinars. You know, give them that additional information that they need, um, and then they'll make a decision whether they want to do it at that point or not. Questions? Do you think people will ask questions? If it's a customer-related question, you've got to answer that because you want to get them as a customer right then and there. We're going to talk, last thing we're going to go through here in a second is the frequent, frequently asked questions. Interested in the opportunity, do not answer opportunity-related questions because that's going to be the information, you, whether it's your home meeting or whether it's the recorded webinar or whatever third-party tool you use, that's why they're going to, so like if I start answering questions, what reason do you have to come to my home meeting? I, you already know what it is. In your mind, which by the way was first person and you didn't see it or hear it the way you needed to. So I'm going to sign you up and I'm going to say, listen, let me just sign you up now because I need your help. I'm trying to get a bonus. And if you decide to do the business, you're already set up. Come to my home meeting, get your questions answered. Will you tell me? Well, that's what the meeting's for. I'm new. I don't want to confuse you. I was new for so much longer than I was actually new. Because it's an easy way. I don't want to confuse you. Watch, you know, watch the webinar. Come to my meeting. So let's just talk a second about, and this is what we're going to close out with, some commonly asked customer-related questions. Now, you understand one thing, that when you get good at this, you will deal less and less with customer questions. See, in the beginning, when I was selling, kind of, I swear to God, I was getting into 30 minutes conversations with my friends and family. Because what do we do? If we feel like we're being sold, we feel like we're supposed to ask questions. It's just the way, like, I bought a new car recently. And, and I caught myself doing this, because I trained this. And the person showing me the car, and I'm like asking these stupidest questions. I'm like, I don't even care what the answers are, but we just, I'm like, well, what kind of engine do you got in there? <laughs> I don't care, right? But it's like, you just, it's what you do. You ask questions. And if your friends feel like you're selling them, they're going to ask you stupid questions, okay? When I started getting good at this and I started really leveraging a relationship, some people never asked me one question. And this is what they would say to me. I'm only doing this because you're asking me to. Great, that's exactly what I want. So just realize you may be getting a lot of these because you're doing too much selling. But what's the name of your company? Well, this is easy, North American Power. That's it, that's the answer. That's the only thing they asked me for. They didn't ask me to go into 50 other different things. Answer the question and then go back to the relationship. North American Power, but more importantly, it's my business. And it would really mean a lot to me if you'd be willing to give the service a try. Never switch, always just try. Because if you don't like it, you can go back, right? Next question, I'm sure nobody's ever asked you this before. <laughs> what are the rates, right? This is, this is certainly a question that will be elicited if you are selling. Now I'm going to give you two answers. I'm going to give you the smart Alec answer that I like to give. And then I'll give you the more PC answer that you, if you don't feel comfortable. Here's what you need to realize. Most people have no clue what their rates are. They've never looked at the second page of their bill. They have no idea. So when somebody asks you what the rates are, this is what I say. What are you paying now? And then you watch them stare at you or you listen for nothing on the phone. <laughs> right? Hello? You there? What are you paying? Well, I don't know. Okay, good, we're less than that. <laughs> That's my answer. See, what good is it going to be for me to give you my rate if you don't even know your rate? Exactly. We're less than what you're paying now. Now look, if you don't feel comfortable saying that, you can say, well, you know, we're, we offer competitive rates. We save people between, look, we offer competitive rates. Savings will vary month to month. Typically over the course of a year, we'll be between 5 and 10% cheaper than the utility. Now that could vary market to market, but that's pretty standard in this industry. Look, this we're not selling on savings. We're not selling on a rate, okay? 
answer the question, but more importantly, it would mean a lot to me if you'd be willing to give the service a try. Now, you will have a percentage of people, it's going to be a small percentage, that are educated consumers. They may know what they pay. In that event, very simple, have them go to your website, punch in their zip code, pull up our rate for their utility and have them get their bill. And guess what? If the, there's a very good possibility we're less, but if in some chance we're not, and they're not interested in the business, and that leverage isn't going to work, then just move on to the next person. There are a lot of people you know, you don't have to waste your time arguing with one person over a tenth of a penny. Does that make sense? Sure. Mm -hmm. So answer the question, go back to the relationship. What if my lights go out, problems with my service, nothing changes, you get a bill from your current company, all we are is the supplier. You pay them, they come out and fix your lights. But more importantly, right, it would really mean a lot to me if you'd be willing to give a search try. Look, you do this two times, people will get it. They'll say, oh, all right, I get it. I'm only gonna do it because of you. Great, that's all I'm asking. See, but what, what, what I did in the beginning is they asked me one question and then I just went into selling mode. And I forgot about the why, I wasn't making it about the relationship, and they lost focus of that. If you're constantly getting that relationship out there, it'll work. And guys, listen, here's what you have to understand. It's going to make you uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. You have to be willing to draw that line in the sand and go right up to it. you got to toe the line with people. you got to be okay at letting people know how important this is to you and not accepting somebody just saying no. Well, what do you mean? Listen, have you ever done somebody a favor? Mm -hmm. sure. It's time to go collect. You know some of the ridiculous favor? You know I helped in one week, I helped three people move. You know how <laughs> stupid that is? <laughs> right? <laughs> much harder stuff than I'm asking for you right now. And you've done much worse stuff for people. So look, you've got to just understand what it takes to make this work. And you've got to realize one thing you got to understand the big picture here. See, there's a lot of people that see this and they feel like they're above this. I felt like I was above this, but you're missing the picture. See, I've built in the last two years part-time, I've built an organization of 20,000 customers that has created a six-figure residual income for me on a part-time basis that allowed me to walk away from a career in medical sales that took me six years to build by learning how to ask somebody to do me a favor and get 10 customers, and all I've done for the last two years is teach every single person how to do the exact same thing. You will build a business of thousands, of tens of thousands, of hundreds of thousands of customers doing exactly this right here. But you have to be the one that does it. You've got to do it the right way, and you've got to understand how important that is. So, um, that's it guys. That is the system. Listen, I strongly encourage you if you're watching this video, as I know many people are, get back with the person that invited you to this video and practice what we just showed you and just get out there and do it. Get the 10 customers, get it knocked out, and you will be well on your way to having success. So, thank you everybody.